we have, and one that is really taking up a lot of our money, and I have the Solid Waste Management Director here with me and we'll to speak in it a little later on in the session, is the high level of indiscipline in certain local communities, which manifests itself in wanton, indiscriminate littering of our carpets and also even of our canals and waterways. What is happening is that some people who are involved in construction work, who are involved in building works, are dumping the builder's waste not only onto the carpets of other people, but they're dumping the builder's waste into some canals and certain alleyways. And this kind of action is facilitating overtopping in certain areas. Take, for example, South Rhinevelt Park, South Rhinevelt Gardens, North Rhinevelt, East Rhinevelt. We had a complaint yesterday about all boy stump in Charleston, where you have people building. And instead of disposing of the waste in an environmentally friendly manner, what they're actually doing is dumping it onto the carpets in front of other people. And when they can't do that, they dump it into the drains, they dump it into the canals. We also have other residents who are simply in the habit of littering, throwing their things out, kicking it down the road, so that once it's not in front of them, it's no problem. If it's in front of the other person, they don't have a problem with that. We also have people who are still in the habit of paying certain people who are, as we describe them, social rejects, to carry away their stuff. And they don't concern where those people throw it as, so long as it is not in front of them. And that is bad. And this is managed in particular by, uh, this is done in particular by some business people. We have to come to the point where we are able to dispose of our garbage in a manner that is acceptable and that will not hurt the natural environment. And you go into some areas and you will see the level of indiscipline where people are still throwing things out onto the carpet and they're still throwing things into the drains and into the canals. Now, when this happens, the Solid Waste Management Director must now direct our contractors to go to those areas and to pick up carpet waste. And I will ask him to give you a figure just now how much we are actually spending for carpet waste alone. I mean, if we have the garbage trucks coming around to pick up garbage, why is it people are still throwing their stuff, their garbage, their rubbish onto carpets? The reason why you're doing that is because there is simply a high level of indiscipline, which has to be stopped not only by the council, but it has to be stopped by neighbors, and it has to be stopped by the community groups who are operating in those communities. And if you are a true community group, you must tell the residents in your communities they must stop dumping. They must stop littering the place. They must stop messing up the place. Because when they do that, they're not only giving you a bad name living in the community, because when somebody comes to your community and sees the community nasty, they don't point out the individual who's doing it. You know what they say, those people in, those com in that community, they're nasty. They don't look to see your carpet clean and tidy. They don't look to see you putting your things properly in a receptacle, but they say everybody in the community nasty. And you must have, you must be the voice of the community. And you must be able to mobilize, not only to do works, but you must also mobilize and organize yourselves to tell people that this is what you have to do. In other words, to raise awareness and to provide education for those people in your community, the community in which you operate, so that your community will have a good image, will have a good reputation, and your community will have a clean and healthy environment. So we have a problem with people still dumping in local communities. It's a problem for our economics because we have to spend money unnecessarily to clean up our carpet waste, which if we have a level of discipline that can be avoided, and the money that we're spending to clean up carpet waste we can put in the area of more developmental works. For example, repair roads, provide a new daycare, and so on and so on. 
So this is a problem that is worrying us. If you go along Regent Street, if you go certain parts of Water Street, certain parts of High Street, you will see that so as, in as much as we clean, people are messing up the, uh, the environment all over again. Just around by Joe Chin, uh, on Lombard Street you will see that. Around by the People's Parliament, you will see that. People continue to throw garbage onto the roadways and we have to reach to a place where we have to stop it, we're in modern times. We're in the 21st century. Georgetown is part of Guyana. Guyana is part of the global village. We have to stop that. When we travel to other cities around the world, uh, Manhattan and some of the other cities, Miami and so on, and, and cities right in the Caribbean, in Trinidad and so on, the place is clean, the place is nice, the place is wholesome. And we talk about it. And we obey the rules, and we obey the laws, and we seek to fit in when we visit, when we travel. But when we return to our own country, as soon as we hit the Shady Jagan International Airport, we move back to our old ways of littering. And then we say, oh, Georgetown needs cleaning up, oh, this place needs cleaning up. Not realizing that some of our attitudes and some of our actions are contributing to the state, untidy state of the city and we have to fix it. The third problem we're having, it's a very serious one. And this is one that involves security. 